Our next speaker is a musician and multimedia, excuse me, multimedia marketing professional who uses creativity to connect people with ideas, emotions, places, and each other. Please welcome Don Klein. Scream if you want an extra $10,000 in your pockets this year. Scream if you like to breathe. I'm not Steve Jobs, but I have something really amazing to show you today, and I call it iBus. It's a concept. It's public transit. It's not brain surgery, but it solves problems. Problems like smog, traffic, traffic, sitting in traffic for 34 hours every single year, every single one of us. This is the one more thing, the one thing in our pocket that solves everything. Even if you don't ride, iBus solves these problems. 60 cars, 60 people on that road. Where's the road? 60 people on their bikes. We're getting better. We're on the right path. 60 people on a bus. That's a road paved with opportunity that's taking people places. We have a future that's ahead of us, and we're all taking different ways to get there. And it's crazy. World, ideas, to-do lists, it's crazy. But we have to stop and we actually think for a minute about how we're going to get there. And the light bulb goes off. And we realize that timing is everything. We have these two demographics. We have young people over here, young professionals, who are untethered from their automobiles and looking for places where they can connect without their cars, their burdens. We have elderly and retirees who are relying on transit, and these demographics are exploding. But in addition to this IBUS, this concept that marries an infrastructure with the need, you also have to have the technology to support the connectivity to that infrastructure. So mobile apps that actually bring things like transit maps, routes and schedules to the palm of your hand. Transit maps like this, our city of Ann Arbor, where for decades we've had this foundation that has helped support jobs and economy in a growing region, where we have six million rides plus every single year. Who remembers sitting on their mom or dad's lap in the driveway, pretending to drive, or maybe even shh, maybe driving for real on a dark street somewhere? That same thrill and that same pride and that same freedom is being experienced by kids who are now riding transit in growing numbers with their parents. And it's funny because that behavior is actually sticking. That behavior isn't something you do just because your parents do it. You're actually doing it because you feel something different. And when you get to be 16, you don't want that driver's license anymore. It's a burden. It ties you down. In fact, in 1982, 80% of 17 to 19-year-olds in America had their driver's licenses. Fast forward to now, and that's dropped to 60%. Like half of our young population doesn't have or even want a driver's license. And if you think about it, they're going to go to places where they don't need cars to live, work, and play. Boomers with benefits. Dirty minds, stop. Okay, this isn't what I'm talking about. Boomers with benefits is actually this set where our baby boomers are now grandpas and grandmas, and 83% of them identify transit as a necessity in order to live a free and independent life and with dignity. Five short years ago, there was only one on Social Security. Fast forward now, 20 years from now, we're going to have 80 million of them. That's 10,000 a day. I don't want to offend anybody, but I don't want to be on the street with 80 million seniors. <laughs> what if this all went away? In addition to baby boomers not getting to their doctor appointments, kids not getting to school, we're not getting to work, people aren't coming to our stores to buy things. We have Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome on the streets where it's mass chaos. I don't want to live there. I want to live where there are 10.5 billion trips on transit every single year, where, here's that $10,000, the average family, if they leave their car at home and take public transit, can save up to $10,000 every single year. That's money in their pockets. Here locally, I like to think of Ann Arbor as a living, breathing organism, where we have this influx of people coming in every day, boosting our economy and our culture. A town of only 115,000 people with six plus million rides on our bus system. It's crazy if you really think about it. Those communities that aren't connected in the way that we are lucky to be connected are victims of mass disconnection, where stores are closing and the towns are withering and dying, and it's really sad. And you're faced with things like this, a tombstone, if you will, a tombstone to the glory days that once were in Detroit. That's how some people view it. I look at it more like in an inspirational way of where Detroit could be headed with talks of regional transit and connectivity and light rail and Woodward. Detroit could be on the rebound once again. Think of New York, okay, the gangs of New York. Okay? Back in those days, they didn't have transit. But since then, New York's built itself on this foundation, literally the heartbeat in the city, the subway, where six million people ride every single day is now a town where it's the pinnacle, it's the, it's the icon of culture and commerce, and it's built on transit. 
Some of us ride, but all of us benefit. We don't all take transit, but we're all on this path. We're all seeking progress. We're all looking towards the future. It's a zigzag path. It's not easy. But when we all look to that horizon, when the waves of the future lap up against our feet, we stop, we think, we pave that zigzag course, we all get to that horizon together and hopefully all breathe literally a little bit easier. Thank you.